the stately homes of England, how beautiful they stand, to prove the upper classes have still the upper hand. Britain in 2013. Women can run the country, they can rule the country, but they're still unlikely to inherit the state pile. certainly damps the fun of the eldest son. It's not an easy job. People look at a house like this and go... It doesn't mean a girl wouldn't be capable. Families would have daughters, 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 daughters just to have a son. You are second, not only second best, but utterly superfluous to requirements. Why do we change things just for the sake of change? Who are the few squeaking females who make a big fuss about something? Back in, um, oh, 1480, 1500, you lived in the Great Hall. And that, this is the Great Hall. And this is the Great Hall, um, rather grander than a kitchen. Francis Fulford's family have lived in this house for the best part of a thousand years. They're old school landed gentry. Your wife and children would sit up, had a little chamber up for her privacy. There's no hiding in a chamber these days, but the old rules still apply when it comes to who inherits the estate. The men always take precedence, so Francis Fulford got the place over his older sisters. Why change it for no particular reason? What is the big reason for changing it? Because it's unfair on women. Why is it unfair on women? Everybody knew the score. Which meant Francis was the 25th or so Fulford to get the house, 3,000 acres and more than 20 cottages. Is that your children doing something out there? Yeah. With a shotgun? Probably. Not here, they go, they ping along. In line with tradition, Arthur Fulford will take over from his father. He's trying to get some fishing tips. Twin sister Matilda doesn't get a look in. Matilda doesn't mind that at all, she has no problem. Have you asked her? I never even, I, I didn't need to. It's more of a man thing, which is terribly sexist. That's but such a ridiculous comment. The concept was you had to be a pretty tough guy to hold places down. We don't need knights to fight on the land, you just need someone who's good at managing <laughs> an estate. But it's worked. The point is it's worked. As I say, it's worked for a thousand years here nearly. Why chuck away traditions that are centuries old just because you want change? Because if we hadn't chucked away traditions that are centuries old, we wouldn't have had a female prime minister. Not just a female prime minister, but a queen. Though Francis Fulford mocks the new law that means the royal baby will be heir to the throne no matter its gender. It's some light bulb moment in a bath Cameron had. And it's lovely soundbite, isn't it? We'll do a soundbite, modernise. Um, I think it's, frankly, we're a lot more interesting and a lot more bigger problems in this country than farting about with the royal succession. Three counties along, in the seat of England's premier aristocrat, the Duke of Norfolk, there's a whiff of genteel rebellion in the West Sussex air. Arundel Castle is securely in the hands of its 18th Duke. He inherited 30,000 acres of the finest land in England and London properties worth around £100 million. I haven't got a lot of um, ancestral portraits, but uh, there are one or two interesting ones. And in here... On the very edge of the estate, the Earl of Balfour, the Duke of Norfolk's brother-in-law no less, inspired by the change to royal succession, wants different rules for the aristocracy too. He's been the beneficiary. His great-great-uncle, the Conservative Prime Minister Arthur Balfour, was ennobled in 1922, and it's passed down the male line ever since. The day I inherited, somebody just said, Roddy, I think you'll find it's still useful for booking a restaurant on the West End, and that's about it. And is it? <laughs> No, not really, because <laughs> nobody who takes a booking anymore practically speaks English and certainly doesn't understand titles. And over here, we and have that, four, four girls, yeah, a little bit closer to that's you. That's the next generation, yeah. The Earl and his wife only have daughters, so his title and old family portraits will go to a male relative, unless a bill going through the House of Lords to change the automatic entitlement of men in the aristocracy succeeds. As Tony Blair would say, why, hey, why shouldn't it change when everything else to do with female rights um, has been changed? Why should this be the one thing that is not? Roddy's wife, Lady Tessa, is the elder sister of the Duke of Norfolk and Earl of Arundel. If equality existed in her rarefied circles, she would have got the castle as eldest child. But it went to her younger brother. She's far too well-bred to discuss being passed over, but she's fighting for her eldest daughter to become Countess of Balfour. 
I was given such pressure from Rob's father to have a, a son and it, it was very, very difficult for me. One of my ancestors was Anne Boleyn. She was given the most terrible time from Henry because she couldn't produce a son. She, in fact, produced a daughter and look at the wonderful daughter she produced. She produced Elizabeth I. So, this is about equality in the most privileged section of British society. Or is it? Scratch the surface and it seems we're not quite talking about revolution. Son inherits, but if not, it goes to the eldest daughter. So are you still saying that boys shouldn't inherit if there is a boy, but it's just if there isn't a boy, the girl should get it? Yes, so I'm, I'm a bit of a halfway house. So it's not exactly a gender equality? Um, well, it's getting, it's getting it accepted and... It's uh, moving in that direction. It's moving in that direction. Liza Campbell wants total equality for girls. She's the second daughter of the Earl of Cawdor, and her grandfather fell off a ladder when she was born, so horrified was he to hear of another girl. Perhaps not much has changed in Britain's social elite since. The sense of entitlement in the men is so strong, and the response is hostile and sneering. One person I discussed it with um, ended up, the co well, the conversation came to an end when he said, well, you do realise that we will abort the, the female fetuses. And I just thought, I don't know, I don't know how to carry on. I don't think we'll wear a hat like that, Arthur. <laughs> I really can't bear that. None of the aristocrats we asked to defend male succession was willing to appear on television, which is why we went to plain old Mr. Fulford Esquire and his 1,000 years of Devon history. I mean, the fact we don't have an inherited title doesn't mean to say we don't act in the same way as if we did have an inherited title. And um, some people might say that being Fulford of Fulford is rather grander than being Lord Blenkinsop or somewhere who made his grandfather made his money from war profiteering. Um, I might say that, actually. Primogeniture here is about long-held family tradition. But the Fulfords take their cue from Britain's aristocratic families, even though, unlike the titled folk, there's no rule laid down that males have to inherit this place. If you had daughters, no sons, what would you do with Great Fulford? It would Fulford? go to the eldest daughter. And what about if you had three daughters and then a really very good male nephew? Oh, well, that'd be another issue altogether, and I'd have to think about that one quite hard, wouldn't I? The stately homes of England have... Being the heir apparent, of course, Arthur can rest easy. Let's face it, he's never been worried. But what of this campaign to modernise a system many people believe too antiquated to bother with? Lady Tessa missed out on what could have been her birthright in an equal world. Roderick Balfour doesn't want his title to slip away from his eldest daughter. Lady Liza hopes for the next generation of Matildas, things might just be different. But the government shows no sign of wanting to get involved in this particular aristocratic tussle. That bloody dog, Bert, come here, otherwise you buzz off. Bert, Bert. So whatever Bert, the royals do, here. don't be surprised Bert, if male Salfords are running this place for another thousand years.